Even if I faced death, I would never deny him. <laughs> At least, that's what I said. And it's what I believe. I had spent the last three years following him. Peter, he said, follow me and I will make you become a fisher of men. When he fed that multitude with five loaves and two small fishes, I was there. When he raised Lazarus from the grave, I was there. When we had a Passover meal and he washed our feet, I was there too. I was used to having answers. I was a Pharisee, a member of the ruling Sanhedrin. All of my adult life, as I passed through the streets, people clamored for my attention. Rabbi Nicodemus, teacher, tell us what does this passage mean? How is this law applied? What is your interpretation of this verse? This was my life. It was wrapped up in the Torah and in my role as a spiritual leader. But all of this began to crumble when I met him. I saw him do things that defied explanation. He healed lepers. He gave sight to the blind. And his teaching, he spoke with an authority and understanding greater than anything I have ever heard before. How was this possible? Who was this radical from Nazareth? For the first time in my life, I felt uncertainty creeping into my mind. I was supposed to be the man with answers, but now it seemed I had nothing but questions. I had to meet with him. I had to talk to him for myself. But I could not see him publicly, not in front of the others. So I came to him under the cover of night. I was completely out of control, out of my mind, guilty and hopeless, oppressed and controlled by demons and dark spirits. I was just Mary Magdalene, a woman in desperate need of salvation. So many in our town, so many in our own family forsook and neglected me. People went out of their way to avoid being near me, but not him. When I was desperate, hopeless, lost, and alone, he came to me. He not only healed me, he saw me, he accepted me, he rescued me. I came to him by night and he did meet with me. I wanted to quiz him about his approach to the Torah, about his background and schooling, but he turned straight to me. With both compassion and authority, he told me that I must be born again. I will never forget as he looked into my eyes and said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The words he spoke were different than the rules of religion I had been trusting in. And I was sure there was something genuine and holy about this man. For years, 
I followed him. I worshipped him. There was so much confusion about who he was, but I knew the truth. You see, I had experienced the truth. He turned my life from darkness to light. I did not understand everything about it, but I knew without a doubt that he was God in the flesh sent to be our savior. Too popular, too unconventional, too, well, everything. That was the determination of my colleagues. Jesus was making himself out to be our Messiah, and they determined that he had to be stopped. I tried to give perspective and be a voice of reason, but the truth was, they hated him. There had been times in the past that I had questioned our court's judgments, but I never thought I would see the day that Caiaphas, our high priest, to have an innocent man condemned to death. I couldn't believe it. I knew we had upset the Pharisees. I knew the high priest Caiaphas opposed our ministry. But that? I was not expecting that. Jesus said we were going to rule with him in his kingdom. So when he was arrested and tried, it shook everything I had come to expect. I know that he had tried to warn me, but I never really believed it. There wasn't room in my mind to grasp it until he actually was arrested. And then at his trial, that woman outside, she asked me, didn't I see you with him? I know I should have been strong, but I was so scared, I denied it. And then another one asked, another, Three times they asked. Three different people were convinced of something I should have been proud of. That I was a disciple of Jesus. But I cursed and told them I never knew the man. And now I'm ashamed that I strayed so far. Caiaphas and the other Pharisees had him arrested. I could not leave. I had to stay, had to watch the unimaginable, the unthinkable. They hired people literally off the street to testify against him. The Pharisees riled the crowd to cry for his crucifixion and sentenced him to death by crucifixion. Jesus did not even resist. I could see in his eyes pain, yes, but there was more. I could see compassion and forgiveness. As the soldiers nailed him to the cross, I heard him say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He was a man full of love. I could no longer hide my belief. I knew it would be the end of my authority and my position inside the Sanhedrin. But what good was that now? He had opened my heart. I had watched him from a distance for years. Now, I was ready to follow him. But he was dead. Until he wasn't. Three days later, as we went to take spices to anoint his body, when we arrived at the tomb, it was empty. It was all so unexpected and confusing. But I saw an angel who spoke to us and said, He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. At Sunday morning, when Mary came running, out of breath, she had been to the tomb and, and he was not there. I was convinced she had lost her mind. But John and I went to see for ourselves. We couldn't believe our eyes. 
we saw the empty tomb and his burial clothes folded. We knew he was alive again. Most of the others were filled with hope and excitement, but me, I knew what I had done. So I went back to my old life. I went back to fishing. I was not going to face him again. I was humiliated and filled with grief. But that did not deter him. He came to me. He asked if I loved him, and he knew that I did. With compassion and resolve, he told me that he was not through with me. I had left him, but he would never leave me. He still had a plan and purpose for my life. I had wandered from him, but he lovingly guided me back to a relationship with him. My name is Eric, uh, Eric Aguilar, and uh, I actually joined Lancaster Baptist in late October. I feel like my story resonates with, um, with Peter a lot because I not, not only did I understand that Peter was a real true disciple for God, but he also had strayed away. And once he strayed away, um, he knew that he had nothing left. My name is Friday, and my last name is Roland Arohan. And um, I've been attending the Lancaster Baptist Church since uh, October last year. In a lot of ways, my story is is like uh, Nicodemus in the Bible, when uh, he went to Jesus and said, you know, how can I be born again? My name is Mary Ledesma, and I've been at Lancaster Baptist since 2015. Before I started coming, um, I was a, like a, a party person, a club hopper, strip clubs, dance clubs, and just had a horrible, like just life, no peace, just depressed all the time, and I just wanted a lot of attention, so I was seeking attention in the wrong areas. What came with my party life was five kids, then I became a single mom, and then even more depression, because I realized that all that, that stuff that I got into, it didn't do anything but just make things worse. In my life, um, it's like Mary Magdalene. Um, I had a lot of chaos in my life, like how she did, and just like how Jesus set her free, he also set me free. I was very young, I was 17, hadn't even gradu graduated high school. So I ended up straying away from God, uh, almost lost my mother, and never grew up with a dad. I became homeless, uh, I was homeless for two years. And from there, uh, I, I started feeling like God was against me, so I strayed away from Him. You know, I was raised in a Christian home, went to uh, a Christian school, so I never really knew, you know, what it is to actually walk the way of Christ. It, I was just basically like, you know, just going to church for the name of it. One of my friends, I met her at the gym and, you know, she started attending the Bible college. Um, I started asking her questions about God. And because of that, I, uh, I was able to attend uh, Lancaster Baptist and I got saved that same day. And I talked to my sister Jacqueline and she said, well, I went to Lancaster Baptist and I learned, I'm growing, the message is good. I, and then just the horrible situations that I was in, I was like, I'm broken, I do need Jesus, so I accept him. One of my uh, other uh, family member, one time they came over to fellowship at uh, Lancaster Baptist Church. So, and uh, we came over and I was touched by the preaching that day. Brother Jerry showed up on my door. He came over. We sat in my living room. Yes, so we went back and forth. Then they asked me if, uh, you know, if I'm ready to give my life to Christ. You know, I said yes. And, and now, like, you know, I feel like I have filled that void of emptiness inside of me with peace, and that comes from Jesus Christ. Well, I don't, have, I don't worry about anything anymore. I used to always be stressed out, worrying about like bills, everything. And now I just know He's gonna work it out. So I just go day by day, just trusting the Lord. I'm a lot stronger now through, the, through those trials, and I know like whatever I go through, He has a purpose for it. It took a lot of fear away from me. Christ has paid, you know, the way for us already that as far as I you know, receive Him as my personal Savior, and uh, 
you know, he has always forgiven me for all I have done. And I feel like we can all relate to that, to like pain, anxieties, and, and overthinking and stuff. And we, we have one antidote, and that's Jesus Christ. And when I actually willingly, you know, um, seeked him, he started unraveling like, you know, all the, all the things that, you know, I had inside. Um, he turned my heart from stone to, to, you know, very tender. And now, like, you know, it, it just, just seeing the miraculous, you know, uh, events that have happened in my life. Like my mother, my mother she's doing amazing. Um, you know, I'm doing great. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, God has actually used my trials to really build a strong foundation. The, me and my children, we all got baptized. And, uh, you know, a lot has changed. And my Christian life becomes so like so strong now when i meet somebody that i you know i want to share the word of god with i you know i share as much as i can by telling them oh you know the lord is good you're know, saying no matter what the problem is it's gonna you know it's gonna have your back i said okay lord i you know i'm gonna wait for you i'm gonna trust you you know and um if you want me to have a husband i'll have one and he did bless me with a husband i'm a wonderful husband and i started over and we have a, um, a four-year-old son, Nehemiah. Now because of me being in Lancaster Baptist and growing, you know, my life's changed, you know, and now I, have, I can raise a son that has a dad and a mom. 